So, we will now see some of the example of EVSD. EVSD as I have discussed and shown you in the uh, lab is extensively used now for different microstructural analysis. So, I am going to show you one example which we have carried out to analyze these solidified microstructure in which EVSD was used to show how the gain refinement happens during undercooling experiments. Well, as you know that uh, gain refinement of any material can be either intrinsic or extrinsic. In case of extrinsic gain refinement, we add certain refinement agents like uh, the titanium boride in case of aluminum alloys, but in case of intrinsic gain refinement, we do not add any elements or any gain refiner. Gain refinement happens because of the fragmentation of the dendrites which form during solidification of the alloys or metals and this can happen because of many reasons. So, one of the reason is the recrystallization and, and the recovery and recrystallization which takes place during the certification or just after the certification event. As you know the certification leads to volume change of the material from the liquid to solid and this can lead to stress generation and stress can cause at high temperature recrystallization and recrystallization can lead to re gain refinement. So, let us see one example like that. So, the one which we have done in our research is on from iron germanium phase diagram. So, if you look at iron germanium phase diagram, it is basically uh, uh, crowded with so many phases, but I am going to consider only the alloy which 18 percent germanium, the one which I marked by red. And as you see here, if you start solidifying from the liquid state, it will form alpha Fe that is BCC alpha iron with certain amount of germanium and then uh, just below the solidus temperature, it will undergo ordering. So, that for BCC alpha iron will become B 2 and then further cooling leads to D O 3 or the second order ordering. So, therefore, this ordering in the solid state can also lead to stress generation and that can also cause recrystallization to happen. So, by knowing that we are going to uh, see how this RBSD technique can be used to analyze the microstructures. I will show you some microstructures which are basically obtained by conventional optical microscope and then I will show you some analysis by EBSD. So, as you see if we undercool the alloy by only 50 degrees that is very small amount, we could see the microstructure consisting of grains like this and with each gain we can see segregation patterns that is basically signature of the solidification at low undercooling. And not only that we can see even the dendrites present within the grains and I am marking some of the grains here as you can clearly see here this is another grain and within the grains you can see the dendritic structure built in. So, therefore, at low undercooling the solidification happens normally by dendritic manner and as you increase the undercooling level by more than 100 degree 110 you can see the grain structure much little bit finer than the earlier one and we can also see the segregation pattern inside the grains inside each again with a, the, the dendritic uh, morphology remaining in the grain. Now, once we uh, do the EBSD analysis, we can find out the nature of this gain boundaries okay, which are there and the in, the in this microstructure. And if we look at it, the most of the gain boundaries the here are shown the as a function of misorientation angle, okay, number of grains as a function of misorientation angles. Misorientation basically means a one grain uh, with respect to the other grain is misoriented by certain angle and that is basically the reason for the gain boundary. We know that a, a within one grain the orientation of the crystal is same as we cross over the boundary we go to the next grain orientation changes and this orientation change is represented by misorientation angle in the EBSD. So, this data is directly obtained from EBSD after just collecting the EBSD informations and plotted as a number fraction of grains versus misorientation angle. As you see most of the grains are actually having misorientation angle more than 25 degrees, very small amount is basically having less than 5 degrees. So, most of the gain boundaries are here high angle bend boundaries that is very clear. So, therefore, one can obtain the nature of the gain boundaries 
of only based analysis directly. Now, this is the one which I am showing if you under cool by 130 degrees K 30 K and you can see in the microstructure there are big grains like this and within the big grain there are small grains this kind of small grains patients. So, by looking at this optical micrograph any what is called avid reader of this uh, what is called microstructure or understand who have having good understanding the microstructure will tell that these grains are actually act formed by some means from the big grains. So, therefore, the boundaries of these grains will be small angle gain boundaries and these big grain boundaries will be large angle high angle gain boundaries. This is what is we find in many case of doing EBSD. If we do EBSD and then find out the misorientation angle plot versus fraction of grains, fraction of grains as a function of misorientation angle, we can see that there are large number of grains having misorientation angle less than 15 degrees. In fact, if you look at it less than 10 degrees, there are large number of grains present. So, these grains actually are small angle boundary, they have the small angle gain boundaries. On the other hand, there are grains which are having large angle gain boundaries which are present here like the one which I shown you and there is another one I can show you here. So, that means, there is a distinct change of the gain boundary nature of the gain boundaries as the under cooling increases. As you know under cooling increases means diving force for side increases so that will there will be no stress and more stress generation and chances of recrystallization is more. So, it looks like that these gains which are formed here may be due to recrystallization which will be clear more as I go on. If we under cool it even little deeply about 140 k I am just showing you the optical micrograph you can see the big grains here again and within the big grain there are so many small grains patients similar nature which I have shown you just one slide before. And if you zoom out the picture you can see see the segregation of dendritic pattern inside the grains actually. If you under cool it even much higher level by 190 k which is very extensively high under cooling you can see the, the big grains here present uh, within the big grains there are so many small grains present. And EBSD analysis taken done on this sample it can be represented as a, the number of fraction of grains uh, versus misorientation angle. Here again you see the large number of grains having less than misorientation angle less than 10 degrees signifying that they are small angle grain boundaries. There are large number of small angle grain boundaries which can be seen here also. On the other hand, there are also large number of grains which high measurements angle. So, they are these big grains which are actually this. So, this two things are very clear from this analysis. One is that there is a subsequent gain refinement, grains are getting smaller and smaller as we under cooling increases, and at the same time, these finer grains are basically having small angle boundaries. So, Therefore, just by doing this CBSD analysis one can tell that these grains most likely has formed by recrystallization. And if they have formed by recrystallization obviously, there will be a distinct, thing, distinct texture of the material also will be visible. So, if I just uh, do a uh, what is called gain map and plot it in different color format, we can see there are very large grains. You can see this one is a very large grain with pink color. And within this large grain, there are so many small grains present, and there are small grain presents here and there also. And if we get this, uh, what is called inverse pole figure, you can see this red, these pink grains are very close to 0, 0, 1 orientation, the green actually 0, 1, 0, 1 orientation, and the blue or rather little bit bluish grains which are present very small, the small ones are actually 1, 1, 1 orientations very clearly. So, you can see the depth of information which one can obtain from one sample by analyzing the BST. And if we do this again uh, this uh, from the same grain if we if I plot the gain boundary number of fraction of gain boundary versus misorientation angle again we see large number of gains as a base small uh, misorientation less than about 7.5 degrees and they are actually having small angle gain boundaries so whereas there are grains which are having large angle gain boundaries. So, gain boundary information very easily obtained. Now, as far as this texture is concerned which I just now I mentioned if I just use this and put a plot inverse pole figure from the gain map, you can see there is a fiber texture present. You can see this kind of nature of this texture clearly present on 1 1 orientations in a typical RD and T D plot. And there are obviously orientations of the grains which are predominantly present in along these directions. So, one can actually obtain exactly the nature of texture from this analysis. And if we do careful analysis, that means if we take inverse pole figure 
of along 001, 110 and 111 of this uh, uh, grains or this line number of grains, we can actually get an idea of the kind of texture presence. You can clearly see that along 110 directions, the, the picture is much more clear showing the distribution of the orientation of the different grains and signifying that there is a distinct texture. So, this itself tells us that the grains are formed by recrystallization and there is a texture of the grains present in the sample. So, by this way the as I we can actually understand the whole mechanism of gain refinement in a uh, in an alloy where there is no gain refinement presence, but because of under cooling gain refinement happens. And uh, this this was not possible without EBSD. Obviously, one cannot do with the other any other analysis than EBSD because in TEM you cannot see so many grains. As you see, the grains are very big, so it's not possible to do analysis by transmission electron microscope. Only possible way to do analysis is EBSD. Well, so now I am going to basically show, show you different pictures, which different analysis which you have done while giving you the demo in front of the. SEM in the Department of Materials Science Engineering at IIT Kanpur. And here we are looking at another sample of stainless steel, austenitic stainless steel 316 and as you know it is a basically it has FCC crystal structure containing about 18 percent chromium and 8 percent nickel. And uh, one can take the sample and then analyze it again the grains, gain boundaries, misorientations and many other features. This sample was basically prepared by simple casting route and followed by rolling. And so, therefore, we expect some certain kind of uh, what is called recrystallization happen in the during the processing. What you see here is basically a gain map okay, of the stainless steel sample and uh, after taking the EBSD data. And uh, here I am showing you gain boundaries uh, by plotting different colors. Okay. So, if you look at if the gain boundary is having white and then it is a high angle gain boundary, the most misorientation will be 15 to 15 to 62.8 degrees that is the basically definition. And if the gain boundary is shown by blue color which are there so many large number of gain boundaries are present having gain bound misorientation angles between the grains to be 7.5 to 15 degrees. And if it is in the green color it is even less than 7.5 degrees. So, as you can see there are a large number of grains uh, having uh, less than 7.5 percent orientation 7.5 degree orientation differences. So, that clearly tells us there is certain kind of uh, what is called texture first of all there is certain kind of gain refinement happened because of the uh, recrystallization or whatever happened in the rolling process. Now, one can actually do this uh, gain map from the from the VSD data and that is what shown here you can see even the very clearly the gain map one can even see the twins in the stainless uh, sorry stacking falls in stainless steel. This is the one there is another one there is another one there is another one lot of and from the gain map which is very clear gain map one can actually see this uh, pole uh, where 001, 111 and 110 FCC is plotted. The here you can see that this uh, red color gains are again having orientation close to 001 and they are there but not very large. On the large number of gains actually green color which have orientation of 101 type. So, therefore, predominantly the grains are having 101 orientations in this crystal and presence of the grains of what is called 111 orientation is very less and even the grains of 001 orientation is little higher than the 11 orientation, but still it is predominantly 101 type of orientation present in the grains. Now, one can actually take the inverse pole figure and analyze the basically uh, uh, pole figure analyze this, uh, so this different, different texture this is along 100, 110, 111. As you can see here along 110 uh, is not clearly visible what kind of texture is present, but along 110 it is very clear that along 110 there are distinct uh, regions where the two orientations are very fixed. So, there is a certain amount of texture presence and along 111 also you can see clearly this this was called uh, predominantly featuring orientation present in the sample. 
In fact, one can do better uh, nowadays with the help of these better softwares. So, what you can see here uh, that the number of grains having different orientation is plotted here. This is 001, this is 101, this 111, and you can see that predominantly the green large number of green areas present here. So, therefore, grains are predominantly 101, which I just now I showed you. 